Morning, and thank you for joining us for an extended midday newscast. I'm Chris Camora. Marcus Washington and Laura Garcia are off. Right now, we want to get you up to speed on just how much the fires have grown. One of the biggest in our area right now is the LNU complex fire. That's in the North Bay, spanning Napa, Sonoma, and Solano counties. It has grown to more than 131,000 acres. And at least one PG&E worker was killed while trying to help first responders. PG&E just, rather, Cal Fire just told us that that worker was killed while clearing power lines in the Gates Canyon area. That fire has also destroyed 105 structures. Meanwhile, the SCU complex fire has grown to 137,000 acres. It spans Contra Costa, Alameda, Santa Clara, San Joaquin, and Stanislaus counties. It is just 5% contained. Two people were hurt in this one, but no structures destroyed. And the CZU August Lightning complex fire is burning on the San Mateo and Santa Cruz County border. We just had Chris Sanchez on the ground in this region. That fire has significantly grown in size to 40,000 acres and is currently 0% contained. There are three confirmed injuries with this fire. At least 20 structures have been destroyed. That was as of midnight. Chris indicated that homes burned in Bonnie Dune, so perhaps that count is headed higher today as damage assessment is underway. Mandatory evacuations are in place with all three of these fires. All right, let's go back to the LNU fire for several days now. That complex fire has burned through thousands of acres. And now Solano and Sonoma counties. Early on here, 30,000 homes are considered to be in the danger zone. And we know again about the first fire related fatality. Let's turn to Sierra Johnson, who's on the ground in Vacaville. What are the conditions there, Sierra, and have they been changing at all? Yes, we've been out here now, probably approaching eight hours in the morning. We were on a, a canyon overlooking the freeway. We could see some of those flames from when the fire jumped the freeway, still burning in the median. Since the sun has come up, we can see just still how hazy and how um, the smoke filled the air is. We've now kind of switched gears, and we're now in front of the Vacaville Community Center. This is one of several um, safe havens for those being evacuated from that area. Uh, folks I've been talking to here say, they're thankful that they are able to have somewhere safe to stay. This, of course, coming after the news that you mentioned of that PG&E worker being killed yesterday afternoon. Again, just running through these numbers, 131,000 acres have been consumed. That's up by about 10,000 um, acres that of our report this morning. Still no containment. 105 structures destroyed and 50 others um, have been damaged. Now, late yesterday, we can see those videos of those flames hitting those homes just burning everything in its place. The entire town of uh, Hillsburg is now on notice to evacuate because of the conditions there. That's a little bit of ways away from where we are. But folks here, Vacaville already, they've headed out uh, because of the smoke and the fire. The folks tell me they've seen smoke and fire before, but it hasn't been enough to get them to move. Uh, take a listen to what one of those residents has to say. The city's been really good about opening evacuation centers. They've got this building is set up, so it's air conditioned. They have food. The Red Cross is in there handing stuff out. Um, it's a place for everybody to go. So I think our community really comes together. Again, this center is one of many. Red Cross was inside, and since we are still in the midst of a global pandemic, um, combined with the fires, they're taking the temperatures. Um, I went in to visit. They ran down a series of questions uh, regarding symptoms. Have you had any of these symptoms in the last few days? Uh, but inside, Red Cross offering assistance. They're offering blankets, foods. Uh, there's cots. But that family, they were able to bring their RV to the parking lot of this evacuation center, so they have um, a nice, um, safe setup there. But again, anyone who is needing to escape, you are able to come to any of those evacuation centers. We have a list of those centers on our website. But this one here, Vacaville, still taking folks, still uh, very busy. We're live in Solana County. Sierra Johnson for NBC Bay Area News. Thank you, Sierra. Let's shift from the northeast to the southwest. Homes burned to the ground in the CZU complex fire in Santa Cruz County overnight, and the fire continues to grow. Let's check in with Chris Sanchez, who is live in Scotts Valley. Chris, go ahead. Well, hi there, Chris. Uh, you know, we had two kind of remarkable moments today. One was during that morning briefing uh, when the fire, Cal Fire folks said that this fire is burning unchecked and it has the potential to reach the city limits of the city of Santa Cruz. And that is something that 
no one wants to see. We also had this moment as we left the incident command center and drove out into the evacuation areas for just a bit. Homes just burning to the ground, not enough firefighters to get there. Uh, we saw this area uh, for a while before we saw firefighters show up. They encouraged us to leave. We didn't have to be asked twice. Now, at this point, there are 20 homes and structures confirmed lost. That number will go up because we don't know which ones are counted in there. 25,000 evacuees are out of their homes. The fire is at 40,000 acres, so not the biggest one in the Bay Area, but this one is 0% contained, and at least three firefighters are injured. That is because of the very rugged terrain that this fire is burning in. Albany Dunes been burning since last night, but with about 500 firefighters on the CZU complex fire, they are stretched very thin. The weather conditions are not helping, and Cal Fire can't even get into the air long enough to gauge the scope of the fire because the visibility is so bad. The assistant manager of the only gas station in Boulder Creek was watching evacuees fuel up and get out of town, and he said he knows exactly how they feel. Hopefully it doesn't get to my place, but two years ago there was a fire 50 feet from my front door, so I've seen what it can do. Uh, you heard Sierra Johnson mention the evacuees and them worrying about potentially being uh, exposed to COVID-19 in a shelter situation. We've talked with a lot of folks out here who say they are preferring to hunker down in their cars or go with friends and family in other parts of the valley uh, or even going into a hotel because they don't want to add coronavirus on top of this fire situation. Uh, Native Santa Cruz, a group that operates on social media, they are encouraging visitors to please stay home from the beaches this weekend. They say this is not the time to come to Santa Cruz. They want all of these roadways open for all of that heavy machinery, all the firefighters, and for the evacuees to move around safely. In Scotts Valley, Chris Sanchez, NBC Bay Area News. Great point. Traffic during an evacuation can cost lives. Chris, thank you very much. All right, so we have new time lapse video from overnight showing flames from these fires spreading quickly. Watch as they approach a PG&E camera in Bonnie Dune. It looks as if the flames destroyed that camera.